A rainy morning in Maine and a drive to Scarborough's southern tip, Prout's Neck, which juts out into Saco Bay. If some of the views here look vaguely familiar, even if you've never been, there may be a reason. Prout's Neck's most famous former resident made them world famous whether or not people knew where they were painted. Winslow Homer was one of the great American artists of the long 19th century in the United States. His works reward close, repetitive looking. They just have an incredible nuance um, to each of their subjects. Ramey Mize, assistant curator of American art at the Portland Museum of Art, is an authority on Winslow Homer, who moved with his family to Maine in 1883 and set up his studio here in Prout's Neck. What was it that drew Homer to have his studio here and paint here? I think it was just this proximity to the kind of rugged, rocky coast of Maine. He really found a place of solace, inspiration, community here in Prout's um, at the studio home. Today, the studio is owned and maintained by the Portland Museum of Art and was undergoing some interior work on this visit, but it was here that Homer painted some of his most famous works, including Weather Beaten, which hangs in the museum, and in the painting, The Artist's Studio in an Afternoon fog, the Prout's next studio itself is the subject. Very much evoking the atmosphere and weather effects of a day like today. And you just see the beautiful silhouette of the studio immersed in this hazy fog with a little bit of sun poking through. Clearly he's just ruminating on this site um, and its meaning to him. Winslow Homer died here in Prout's Neck in 1910. This was his haven in the end? Absolutely, yes. This was really a site where he felt he belonged, a place of home. Truth is, Maine's York and Cumberland counties have long been a haven for artists of all kinds, creating art all over. For instance, along the Saco River in Buxton, Maine, on Salmon Falls Road, you'll find the Saco River Theater. Saco River Theater is a small professional equity theater company and music venue. Maine natives Dana Packard and Jennifer Porter founded the theater in 1988, though the buildings had several former lives, starting a century before as a Universalist church, a silent movie house, and a Grange Hall. And an auction hall. Yes. And that's what it was when we got it. Its most recent life as a theater and live music venue seems to have taken well here, earning broad local support. We really do have hundreds of people locally who support us regularly. The theater does three full productions a year, plus live music events. It's a lean operation, small staff, and Packard and Porter wear a lot of hats some on stage and some metaphorical. And then came COVID, and from Broadway to Buxton, Maine, theaters went dark. Was there a time during that where you felt like this theater may have to shutter for good? Absolutely, there was. We simply had to close down and had to furlough everybody. Including ourselves. 22 months later, they reopened with a whole new appreciation for their loyal local supporters. And then there they were. It was a real amazing sense of community, and a beautiful, beautiful thing. Meanwhile, like the river it sits on, this determined little gem just keeps rolling and singing along. Someone called it Little Carnegie Hall on the Saco River. <laughs> You may not be familiar with Alfred Maine. It is a bit off the beaten path, even for York County. Even fewer folks know there was once a thriving Shaker community here. It was a working community, a very large working community of Shakers, men and women, and children. Linda Askoff is the curator of the Alfred Shaker Museum, which was created in 2011. Because we wanted people to know what had been here and what was left behind. Tis a gift to be it was in Alfred, for example, in 1848, that the most famous Shaker hymn, Simple Gifts, was written. So ironically, one of the Shaker communities in New England that is least well-known produced the most well-known Shaker hymn. Correct. The town of Alfred adopted it as their town song, which I don't know if other towns have their own song, but we do, and we're proud of it. A few original outbuildings of the Alfred Shaker community remain a sliver of what was once here. So under this mural depicts the Shaker community around? 1795. 1795. 
And this would have been really when it was most productive. At its height. The Shakers and Alfred farmed, raised and sold cattle, made leather goods, as well as the baskets and furniture the Shakers became famous for. But who knew each Shaker community had its own distinctive color? So the Alfred Main Shaker community was Alfred Red. Correct. The Shakers were the most successful utopian community in the history of America. They were a tremendous model of hard work and devotion that lasted for over 200 years. We were also met in Alfred by old friend and author Howard Mansfield, whose newest book, Chasing Eden, in part looks at the Shaker experience. They planned these communities. They were the first to sell packaged seeds. They're credited with inventing the circular saw, this, these kinds of things. They were very industrious. They were industrious and they were prosperous. They were also celibate, which over time assured the slow motion dissolution of most Shaker communities, including Alfred, which came to an end in 1931. So the world changed around the Shakers, the country became more urban, more industrial, faster, and they got left behind in a certain way. But in a few former Shaker communities, like Alfred, Maine, a simple effort continues to share the simple gifts of some former neighbors. Their simplicity, their kindness, their community. We want people to know this is what was here. All right, so you may wonder, which is a good question, if the Shakers were celibate, how did they prosper and survive for well over 200 years? And there's still a small community that continues on today. Right, well, it's not well known, but many states, including Maine, as a matter of fact, placed orphaned children with Shaker communities. They got an education there. They were allowed to leave when they were 18 years old, but many of them stayed on and became lifelong Shakers, and that's how they continue to prosper.